Okay. Welcome to the SMI community meeting for October 28th, 2020. Dropping a link to the notes so that you can take a look and follow along. And we'll, uh, we'll get started with, um, we have a number of items from Michelle who will be joining us shortly. Uh, and we have a Dhruv, I don't know how to say your name. Can you pronounce that for me? That is Dhruv, yes, you pronounce it correctly. Wonderful. Well, uh, Dhruv, since you have an item on the list and are here, you wanna tell us what you've got? Yeah, sure. Can I share my screen? Um, do you need to or? Um, it's oh, set it's... to allow share screen, but yeah, if you're going to show something five minutes or less, this isn't a time for giant demos. We just. Yeah. So uh, if I go to wait a bit, if it's okay with you, push it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to go to the first item that Michelle had on the list. She wants to talk about uh, releasing a new version of the spec and get updates to TCP route and the addition of UDP route. There is a diff that she dropped in the notes uh, and I will put that in the Zoom chat as well. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that? We have our, our newest spec maintainers, by the way, on the call. Uh, Turin, Michael, welcome. Thank you. Hey. Um, so yeah, what are what are your thoughts? I'll put you on the spot, Michael, and say, what are your thoughts on releasing a new version of the spec with updates for TCP route and the addition of UDP route? Yeah, as I mentioned on Slack, I'm, I'm fully supportive. I think we should um, definitely Make sure that the the whatever the, the last pending uh, open issues are, that we can set itself a goal. I don't know next week or whatever, or next time when we meet, uh, that we um, get that out of the door. Okay, Absolutely. that sounds reasonable. Um, we'll we'll revisit this if Michelle's able to join us. But meanwhile, interesting question around this PR around traffic target needs an LGTM. So that's important to look at. Uh, but do we want to make sure we don't have two core maintainers from the same company changing the spec? What do people think of that? Yeah, I, I guess if it's not if it's not yet in, in the charter or whatever, we should definitely say it should have support from two different companies. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that just seems reasonable. We actually have that role already for blog posts. So um, that, you know, two people from the same org can't just put their own blog post in without getting a buy-in from the community. So, um, oh, how many, or I was not able to be at the SMI metrics call last week, uh, but I did see that there's a Google doc asking for feedback on it. Um, did anyone who went to that meeting have something they want to tell us about it? I do. I put it at the very bottom of the of the agenda, but I, I don't want to monopolize it. Let, let's get to that. Yeah. Now, yeah, Michelle, yeah. I was trying to. Oh, excellent! And we have a Michelle. How's it and going? To bring, yeah, and to uh, bring Michelle up to date, uh, we all think that a new version of the spec sounds great, and people should um, comment on it. And uh, we like the idea of more than one org LGTMing a change to the spec. Um, is there anything else about like releasing the new version or approval from multiple orgs or multiple implementations that you want to highlight for us, Michelle? Um, yeah. Okay. So like we have like I think it's a two LGTM policy. I don't know that it's like really stated in our governance doc, but it is like basically um, applied because of our PR gate, like the branch protection rules that we have. So um, 
Uh, so that's there. And I, it's great that we don't want like the same person from, or the same, excuse me, people from the same organization to LGTM it, but is two enough? Like at this point we have several implementations and I'm just wondering, like not everybody has time to like, like, you know, attend the meetings and they should, but like, you know, life happens. So should we be some other specs, like this is how it's done um, there. Some other specs have chosen to kind of like, they have like a person that's a core maintainer and that person or set of people kind of goes around to the implementations and has the implementer review that spec change. I don't know if we're kind of like there yet, just because like, um, I just want to make sure we're, I, I think we're at the point where people are implementing and if we merge something we could significantly break. I mean, that's the whole point of versions and stuff too, you could argue, but yeah. Does that make sense? Basically, should we go around and garner feedback from different implementations, regardless of what the LGTM policy is? I mean, that seems like a good idea, but then do we make a canonical list of the people who get weigh in on specific spec changes or like what's, you know, yeah. Like how do we implement that? Or do we have like a lazy consensus with a certain amount of period of time and just say like, unless you object within two weeks or within a month, this is going to happen maybe over two meetings. I don't know. I think that's uh, definitely. Seems... Oh, go ahead. I, I just support you for the, the lazy consensus. We just need to make sure that, um, you know, if it's just one channel, like if we say only Slack or whatever, then, you know, people who might only, I don't know, look at the mailing list or whatever might, or, or some people might not look at Slack at all and only show up at, or, or read the, the, the uh, Google Docs, the, the meeting notes. So we need to make sure that, you know, everyone has a fair chance to actually react and, and really given that we meet every two weeks. Um, you know, we, we can't say, you know, until next Monday or whatever, we really need to make sure that we get that full cycle on all different channels. So I don't think we have like a, a plus one is that I, I don't think we have like um, a mailing list specifically with implementations, people who have implemented, but I wonder if like that is a better way of going or lazy consensus plus maybe sending out an announcement on this mailing list um is a good way to announce like hey there's a change and you should review it if you are implementing smi otherwise it's going to break and yeah i'm seeing nods is a two-week time period good for having people review spec changes do we want two weeks or do we want to cover the period of at least two meetings just kind of a technical difficulty think, think, or a yeah, technical decision, think, but like if it's yeah, kind of a two week period, but one meeting right in the middle and you know what I'm saying? Like right. inclusive of two meetings for sure. Or, or a meeting might be postponed for a week for whatever reason. So yeah, I think two meetings makes more sense. So should it be on every PR that's a spec change or just like right before a spec release? You mean in, in order to merge a PR that has a spec change? Yeah. Uh, okay. Because mm -hmm. I mean, the, the spec is uh, structured in a way that, you know, there's like working documents so working documents co can go back and forth. So it's okay, I think, for PRs to get merged as long as once it's merged and people are looking at it that they you know, realize, hey, maybe this doesn't work for our implementation and they could be able, you know, have the opportunity to go back and re-review and say, hey, look, I'd like this reverted. Yeah, and then so then the question is, um, should there be a, a kind of a, not a two week, but a two meeting requirement on changes in a final spec, which I think it sounds like we're kind of congealing yeah. on that. And then the second question is, well, hey, does, while that doesn't apply to, to working doc changes, does that potentially apply to, uh, well, or I guess maybe I should clarify, like I assume that, the, that of the release process that we have right now, there's a difference between um, merging a change into, um, 
guess there's not based on your based on your facial expression. There's merging a change into um, the um, master branch, so to speak, like not in the working doc, but in the spec itself. That that, we're, that merging into the spec itself, that's one and the same of making that versioned release. Like, like the act of merging into the spec is in fact the release of that spec. And I was just, I was thinking, hey, there might be a, a difference. Like if there if we're if a release is yeah, let me let me maybe walk us through what this spec release process looks like, and then I think that would uh, help us to this conversation. Um, when we do a spec, oh, go ahead. Uh, one second, I want uh, want to mention we can use here branches, and I think it will do exactly what you want. Like if we have a working branch or a preview branch, everything gets PR'd against that branch and that branch is at the end validated by two people and merged into master and from there uh, we do the release. Should that work? I think so. I think the only reason we were not for branches was, be were, was because people wanted historical context for all the a, a, like uh, all the different APIs, but those live in directories. So in this branch, like the APIs would, the different versions of the APIs would live in their own directories, right? Still? That oh, so we, the preview branch will be a fork or fork, a, a clone from master, a copy of master, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't change the files in any way. Only the files with working uh, that are um, in work, only those are changed in that branch. Okay. Makes sense. So we don't change anything, but just the, the branch that we uh, configure pull request to be opened against. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Um, I really wish we could get rid of the directories. <laughs> It's just like, people aren't gonna need V1 alpha one, V1 alpha two over time. I think it's just the fact that we're like moving kind of quickly, but if we have branches for each release, then it'll just be like, we could have the directory for the API supported, the versions of the API supported in those branches. I'm good with the branch branching release method, disregard everything else I said. Theron's like, yes, we will disregard. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also think uh, the directories can be annoying at some point with all the versioning in there. Uh, I proposed branches at the beginning, but yes, there were other mm -hmm. arguments then. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. We will have a Mass, master seems so outdated, main branch, which is net right now called master. We should have that conversation, but we I should have created the issue for it. Perfect. Thank you. Let's just call it main. So we'll have this main branch previously master branch. And, um, and then we'll have like a working branch and in the working branch, that's where you merge your changes and then a release basically means that we'll merge that branch into the main branch. Did I capture that correctly? Yes, but that happens through a pull request. Yeah. And that pull request needs to be approved. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, yes, and that's where we get, it. oh, go ahead. So for, a fi for promoting something that's in work to a final release, someone needs to approve that or um, to people from different companies need needs to approve a certain release. I would go even further and to say like, you know, X many implementations need to approve the actual release. But we can get there. We don't have to do that all in one day. So we need to define governance, right? Uh, in that perspective, we need yeah. to change the current governance to make room for, I don't know, uh, over oversteering uh, committee or something like that. So uh, who wants to write up the doc 
around who wants to modify the governance doc and then who wants to uh, define our release process in an MD file. I think I can describe the release okay. and work from there. I can, I can take Stefan, if you want to, if you want to team up on it, I mean, it makes more sense if someone like yourself does it, who has a lot of experience with it, because I, you know, you have it pretty much in your head, uh, but I'm more than happy to team up with you on that and to, you know, help. Awesome. You if you're on the, on the steering seat, driving seat. Thank you. All right, there's really loud construction in my building and I could not hear who Michael was talking to, who he was saying there. Stefan, Stefan, Stefan. Okay, great. Stefan was voluntold, no, he was actually volunteering to do it. And I said, I'm helping him. But I'm not doing the governance uh, change. <laughs> well, it looks like Lee. No one else has to pick that. <laughs> Lee volunteered for that one, right? Yeah. And Michelle, I, in answer to the other question, we were talking about active, I think it was the word, and describing that. Um, uh, I, my answer was, I, I want to, <laughs> or I want to engage there. Um, and maybe I should, because it'll be helpful in a couple of other projects. Oh, um, but uh, yeah. Is that about active core maintainers? Uh, yeah, just like what, what it means to be. Active, you know. Yeah. Um, no, we don't have to. We don't have to recap. I just left the question that you'd asked, I think, unresponded to, and so that wasn't out of enthusiasm, or for lack of enthusiasm, it was lack of time. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Uh, let's carry that conversation on Slack. That's good. Okay. okay. Uh, should I just take the next bullet? Okay, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the next thing is real quick, um, we had a meeting on around specifically SMI metrics last week. And just to see the conversation, we had John um, from the OSM team uh, basically talk through how he implemented SMI metrics for the project. Um, and so that was a, a good, good conversation, um, good learnings there. If you want to see the recording, it's posted. Uh, one of the action items that came out of that was that we wanted to get like broader feedback on SMI metrics. So I created a Google Doc. Um, so if you have implemented SMI metrics, looking at you, Tharun, um, please leave feedback. Or if you have like just thoughts on 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 that thing, on on that kind of stuff, please please leave feedback. If you tried to implement SMI metrics and weren't able to, if you got confused, if you think it should be something different, all of that raw feedback is welcome on the doc. I'm going to review that doc um, after the doc is closed. It'll be open for two weeks. I'll review it, try to condense the information, and then present it back to the community on one of these calls. Uh, going down, the next um, uh, next item is some one of the, one of the pieces of feedback we got from that meeting was that there are some questions that get answered about the spec in the issue queue, and those don't make it back to the actual spec. Um, so we just, as people in the community, need to be like aware of that. So if you've asked a question, you've gotten an answer, you know your contribution to the spec based on what clarity you got would be more than welcome. Um, also, if you're answering that question, please go ahead and like create a pull request and make that clarification in the text as well so people don't um, get confused a second or third time. Uh, if somebody wants to do like a review of that kind of stuff, like if you want to review the closed pull request or excuse me, if you want to review the closed issues and the discussion items, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of just like random things that would be great to add to the spec. So that's like an open item or task. I don't have the bandwidth this week to tackle that, but if anybody else has some time, you know, that those kinds of contributions would be more than welcome. 
Uh, so another question that I had here was that uh, should we do a release of the SMI metrics with the with the current state of the spec because the spec uh, the spec differs from the current latest release, right? Uh, I mean the spec changed, but uh, but there wasn't a release. So should we do a release and then take feedback or take feedback, incorporate it, and then? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, how how much effort is cutting a release? Like, would you have to do a bunch of updates to SMI metrics? Mm -hmm. uh, You're talking about like the actual project, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so from what I see, uh, like from other project, SMI metrics differs a bit, right? Uh, because the types are not needed essentially. It's the it's the implementer that should return the API, mm -hmm. like whatever the defined API is. Uh, I'll try to see if, if the types are similar with that of the documentation. If it is not, I'll update the types and then uh, and then cut a release probably based on that in the okay. metrics group. So with, uh, but aren't there some things in the SDK repo that need to be updated too that would be considered bugs because they're not like, they don't match the spec? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so my intention was to update the SDK repo, but the implementations would still be not updated obviously. And then we can take from there, right? Yeah. Uh, then you can have a release and the imp implementer should implement it. From okay. There. Cool. Okay. I do that. Yeah. Would you update it to match what is the current version of um, what is the latest released version of the metrics bit of the spec? Uh, uh, in SMA metrics, the, the thing here is that uh, I <laughs> we, we don't have a spec. From what I see, uh, it's it's still V1 alpha one, like uh, it's the same and, and oh. that's where implementers did, but the spec changed and we did not update the type. So I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is the spec, like the latest release, uh, like in, hold on, let me go to the VO 5.0. Mm -hmm. so, so we released metrics seven months ago in the SDK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The type should be updated then. Yeah. So right now we're at V1 alpha two working doc of this of the SMI metrics mm -hmm. spec. Um, and the like the latest released version of uh, SMI metrics in V0.5.0 of the spec is um, V1 alpha one for the metrics mm -hmm. on it. So I think everything should match V1 alpha one. And then when we cut this release, then we'll cut V1 alpha two of the metrics and we should update the SDK and the implementation based off that. We're on the same page? Yep, I'll try to update the, uh, so my takeaway is that I'll update the types and then cut a release of the of the spec essentially with the types. Then the, then the implementations uh, will obviously will have to follow. The other thing that was that uh, there is a slight difference in the versions even in SMI our metrics, right? The repo, uh, there are releases in the repo. That is the implementation side of stuff. And then the spec is different there. Uh, so I think we should have some documentation probably on how it differs. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, I do that. When you say cut a cut a release of the spec, so, um, so like we cut a release of the whole spec every time any part of the spec changes. So if you wanted to cut a release of V1 alpha two of the traffic metrics API, then it would be, um, then you'd have to cut V0.6.0 of the actual like whole spec. Ah, oh. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So. So I'll raise an issue probably to discuss more on that. First, um, I'll try to see the SMI metric side of things. Then I'll follow up on what we should do on the SMI specs. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Yeah, I think the the synchronization of a new release should come from. So we we do a release on the spec itself, but that doesn't change anything, right? People should use our, our CRDs. So those CRDs are not yet released. We have to implement the SDK for the change and publish the the new CRDs, and then when we publish the SDK, that's the final release of our spec. And then we can update our own components like the metrics provider, Istio and others. That's how the release should work, right? 
We're on the same page. I mean, that's no, that's how we do it. No. So I think we should announce a release after we also implement all changes in the SDK. Oh, okay. That's nice and nuanced. You can note that in your release doc. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right, next. Okay, uh, so can I share my screen? Yeah. We have two minutes left in this meeting, so I think the okay, yeah, presentation sure. is not going to be a long thing. <laughs> Okay, yeah, sure. I will make it quick. So Layerify is working to, we were working on running some tests, which satisfy the conformance of that particular mesh, right? So we have a working demo of it in the machine itself. I ran a test while the meeting was on to see and how it tests and runs. And currently the test, which we have defined are over here, we have defined it for three particular specs. These are like infant, uh, test cases, which we have defined, we need to work on that. So we wanted to call for volunteers who could uh, give their input and tell us uh, if certain kind of tests they want to invoke for, for this report which we are creating on the SMI test. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Can you link to that repo? Yeah, sure. One second. Okay. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I just want to dive in and uh, give you notice that we are also tracking the same on our documentation in which we've, we've been listing down all the uh, tests that we are planning on and the test cases. So that's, that's another place that we can uh, so here are the test sets which we are proposing on and right now thinking of implemented or some of them are implemented yet and we would like to input on if any other test set you want to include in this Sounds good, thanks. So another component to that, I'll add to this, um, some of you have seen this and commented on the tests um, within here. The, and we've made call for uh, participation and defining and refining and defining these tests. Um, so we're, we're still looking for that. Um, the demonstration that Drew was just showing is that of um, OSM and it running through a few different tests and whether or not and what the results of those are. I wouldn't read too much into the results um, because there's only, only so many tests to find. We want to make sure that we're, you know, that each, each implementation is reviewing these. And so there's kind of a call for three things. One is review of tests and uh, the addition of tests. Two is um, we've talked in the past about conformance for, or uh, compliance versus capability acknowledging that not all implementations intend to fully implement all specs. So there's an open question about the philosophy of whether or not a given mesh should be considered out of compliance if it never intends to be fully capable. There's a, there's a good discussion for that doc. And then the last um, call here is for um, a, a service mesh maintainer to, well, to, to, to engage and to begin uh, refining their, their test cases because we'll, uh, we want to work toward um, a composite report. So, so those, those teams that have some time, um, don't everyone jump in at once because uh, the, the, the crew here couldn't take it, but, but uh, anyone who'd like to get there, their, make sure that the, their, the mesh that they represent is well, rep, you know, well represented in terms of conformance. How's your how's your chance?
Sounds good. This is all really cool work. I know we're over, but is there a dedicated meeting for the conformance related stuff? I feel like it always gets kind of thrown in as a stand up thing. And I don't know if like everybody's going to go and like, you know, rush to write test cases. Um, so uh, not that that's like a, not an exciting thing to do It's just, you know, when you're juggling a bunch of stuff, it's hard to make time for that, but it's important. So we should. So I think if there was a forcing factor of like getting people together in a meeting and saying, you need to have read this doc and we're going to go through this doc and like we're going to answer questions together, that might be a little more helpful um, for me. Uh, but maybe I'm alone here. I don't know. But I, I want to focus on it. I want to I want to help. I want to, you know, yeah. write test cases and make sure that OSM is compliant and stuff like that. So we definitely have incentive, but uh, it would just be great to have some sort of forcing function. Yeah. And also, it's a little bit, it's a little bit to digest, too. Like, are you, and so, um, let me let me get a good response to that because there is a response, but I think the meeting that I would identify as also has other items on the agenda. And so, like we did an offshoot of traffic metrics. So. Excellent. That would be so great. Thank you. who's moderating but i think somebody needs to tell us that we can go <laughs> well i think technically you're moderating but of course i yeah i mean that's why i was like take us through our topics um but uh i think yes we are at our time we're over time so i am going to bump those last couple of topics to the next meeting and i will hassle people on slack for um you know assignments and michelle is smiling but honestly Michelle, you did a fantastic job because you were taking us through the exact topics we need to talk about. Really the unintentional <laughs> moderator. <laughs> Love it. All right. It was great. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>